What's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. We're going to count down the JRPGs I would give a 10 out of 10 to. This is a really exciting video, so thanks for stopping by. We already went over the best JRPG remakes and my personal top 10 JRPGs of all time, so definitely be sure to check those out if you haven't had a chance to yet. This isn't a personal top 10 list of my favorites. This list is meant to recognize the games that truly did something special and made waves in the genre and therefore earned that 10 out of 10. Now, no game is really perfect, let's be real, but these games are games that would be considered a masterpiece in most cases and are widely considered some of the best JRPGs ever made. Please leave a comment below and let me know what games you think should be on the list. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into it. First up, we've got SMT5. Now, this game thrusts players into a post-apocalyptic Tokyo, blending a dystopian atmosphere with mythological elements and supernatural themes. The narrative unfolds as the protagonist navigates a demon-infested world, facing moral dilemmas, engaging in alliances, and making choices that shape the storyline and its outcomes. One of the game's strongest suits is its demon collecting mechanics. SMT5 offers an extensive roster of demons to recruit, negotiate with, and fuse. The strategic depth in building and customizing your party adds layers of complexity to combat, rewarding tactical thinking, and exploiting enemy weaknesses that a lot of games really don't deliver on this level. SMT5 is just an incredible game in my opinion. The series is known for its insanely brutal turn-based battles, and this game is absolutely no different. It manages to give us some of the most unique and deep turn-based mechanics out there and builds off the mechanics that fans of the series really know and love. I'm a huge fan of the Persona series. If you've been here, if you've watched my videos, you absolutely know that at this point, and Persona is a spinoff of SMT, and therefore, if you're a fan of one, you will recognize some mechanics from the other, and recruiting demons in SMT5 is just as rewarding as it ever has been. One of the major things that has stood out to me in this game, and the thing that keeps me coming back, is the fact that decisions you make in this game will affect the fate of some of the characters you meet, and in turn will contribute to the game's outcome, like I said before, and it will determine which of the multiple endings you will get. If you want a game that will challenge you at every turn, SMT5 really is it. This game is great. It's critically acclaimed for its narrative depth, engaging gameplay, dark aesthetic. It just continued to garner attention and acclaim from fans of the series and solidified its place as a standout title within the SMT series. This game, at its core, is a JRPG through and through in every sense of the word, and it's absolutely fantastic. So that's why it deserves a spot on this list. Next up, I've got Trails to Azure. Now, as you all know, I've been on an amazing journey through the Trails series, and I've recently just finished the Trails to Azure game, and I'm about to move to the Cold Steel arc. I'm really, really hyped about it. Personally, couldn't be more excited to play it after playing the Crossbell arc. Set in a vibrant world, this continues the story from Trails from Zero, following a group of determined individuals as they navigate political intrigue, societal issues, personal conflicts. It dives into complex themes while maintaining a focus on the diverse cast of characters and their growth throughout the game. There's a reason Trails to Azure is on this list, and it's not just because it's the one I played most recently. This game is unbelievable. There might not be another game series out there that puts more focus and attention into writing, characters, and world building than the Trail series. I can't recommend Azure enough, as it builds off of what has made the series so great from the beginning in so many ways. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is also incredibly fun. I want to mention the addition of the Master Quartz that's kind of a game changer in my opinion. Your character will learn these new super powerful Master Arts that can either deal damage or give massive buffs, and this helps significantly for some of the game's later boss fights and some of the game's in-game stuff. Trails to Azure is just a great game, and it seems like in my opinion the Trail series just doesn't quite miss at all. Any fan of JRPGs should play Trails. I know it's quite the undertaking to jump in from the start, but it's so incredibly worth it. You will not regret it, and that's why Trails to Azure is on this list. Next up on the list we've got Lost Odyssey. Now this game came at a time where I personally felt JRPGs weren't getting quite as much love and attention with Western RPGs like Mass Effect and Elder Scrolls kind of stealing the spotlight. But here comes Lost Odyssey from the creators of Blue Dragon on Xbox. Also an awesome game, by the way. You should definitely go play it. But Lost Odyssey follows an immortal protagonist as he embarks on a quest spanning multiple generations. The journey is one of self-discovery, filled with memories and relationships that transcend time. The storytelling is elevated by the inclusion of like its short stories called um, Thousand Years of Dreams. It provides a glimpse into the long and tumultuous past. These add a profound layer of depth to the narrative, making Lost Odyssey really stand out in its storytelling. 
What I love most about Lost Odyssey, though, is that with Western RPGs kind of taking the majority of the attention during this time, as I mentioned before, Lost Odyssey doesn't try to reinvent the wheel. It doesn't stray away from what makes JRPGs great. The turn-based combat system in Lost Odyssey is traditional, but super, super polished. What sets it apart is the implementation of ring commands. Introducing time button presses for enhanced attacks, immortals can learn new skills by equipping mortal characters, adding a layer of strategy to progression. The inclusion of mortal enemies and diverse boss battles keeps the combat super engaging throughout. I just feel like Lost Odyssey doesn't get enough of attention, and it absolutely should. This is a 10 out of 10 in my book, and it's definitely Definitely a must play. Next up, we've got Skies of Arcadia. Now, this just brings back some unbelievable fuzzy memories of the Sega Dreamcast. What an amazing short lived system, right? Like, truly incredible games on it. My favorite memory of the Sega Dreamcast is easily Skies of Arcadia, a steampunk JRPG with pirates. Yeah, it sounds awesome, I know, because it absolutely is. They really deliver a crazy good experience here. One of the game's standout features is its emphasis on exploration. As you soar through the skies on your airship, you're greeted with breathtaking vistas, hidden treasures, and diverse discoveries. The sense of freedom in navigating the vast world is absolutely exhilarating. Fostering a desire to uncover every secret nook and cranny, I was trying to get into every single corner of this game, couldn't get enough of it, absolutely loved every minute of it. The turn-based combat system strikes a perfect balance between strategy and fun, engaging battles combined with an innovative ship-to-ship -ship combat mechanic really added layers to the depth of the gameplay. Building your crew, customizing your ship, discovering new abilities, it offers an ever-evolving experience that really keeps you invested. Skies of Arcadia is in a league of its own, and I would love to see a remake for this one because I really still feel like there's nothing out there like it to this day. So if you haven't played it, definitely jump in on this one. Next up, we've got Xenoblade Chronicles. The Xenoblade series is special to me and in my opinion really manages to give Vans a truly unique and amazing experience time and time again. If I had to choose one game in the series that deserves that 10 out of 10, it's the original. But honestly, in my book, any of them could be on here. The characters are iconic and the mechanics hold up so well over time that even with the definitive edition release, just didn't really feel dated. Xenoblade could have came out today. It's a timeless adventure. And this is an expansive and ambitious JRPG. It was originally released on the Wii and it stands as its testament to innovation, vast world building and engaging gameplay that redefine the genre. The game introduces us to the colossal world of two warring titans where the story kind of just unfolds on their lifeless bodies. The narrative revolving around the mythical Monado Blade is an epic journey filled with mysteries, prophecies, unforeseen twists, and I mean incredible moments that unveiled surprises I never could have anticipated. The depth of the world building is extraordinary, offering a living, breathing environment that invites exploration and discovery at every turn. Gameplay in Xenoblade Chronicles is a fusion of real-time combat and strategic depth. The innovative art system allows players to execute special abilities, while the emphasis on positioning and the use of Monado's visions add a layer of depth and strategy to each of the battles. The open world design coupled with the intricate side quests and dynamic day-night cycles creates an immersive experience that rewards exploration. The writing and world building really are amazing, and this paved the way for a trilogy that is unmatched in my opinion. If you haven't played Future Redeemed DLC for Xenoblade 3 or Torna for Xenoblade 2, kind of see how everything comes together, it really is mind-blowing. And none of the greatness that came from all the games in this series could have happened without this game. Please play the Xenoblade games if you haven't already. These are amazing JRPGs, and honestly, any of them could have landed on this list, so pick it up if you haven't yet. All right, moving on to Dragon Quest VIII, Journey of the Cursed King. This game is nothing less than a masterpiece. It encapsulates the essence of classic JRPGs in every sense. It delivers a captivating and unforgettable adventure. This may be the best Dragon Quest game, and with that being said, it's up there as one of the greatest JRPGs ever made in my opinion. The art style, the turn-based mechanics, the story and characters, and the setting really make for an unforgettable time. This was the game that like really brought more eyes to the series. And you can honestly say that 11 did that on a whole new level, but 8 really paved the way for 11, I think. The game's turn-based combat system is a hallmark to the Dragon Quest series. It strikes a balance between accessibility and depth. Battles are dynamic. And it requires a strategic thinking and party coordination. The tension escalates with each encounter and offers a satisfying challenge without really, really overwhelming players. Dragon Quest VIII stands tall as a shining example of excellence. It's captivating storytelling, charming characters, 
engaging gameplay, and timeless aesthetics make it a quintessential experience for both longtime fans of the genre and newcomers. It's a true testament to the enduring legacy of the Dragon Quest series, and it's absolutely a must play for any fan of JRPGs. Next up is Final Fantasy IX, and the reason why it's on this list and the reason why I love Final Fantasy IX so much has a lot to do with the fact that it gives us a game that embraces the fantasy RPG concept, knights, mystical creatures, a world filled with magic and royalty, check all the boxes for a game that you could expect to experience when you pick up a box that says Final Fantasy on it and bring it home to experience it in all its glory. At the core of Final Fantasy IX lies its rich and diverse cast of characters. Each party member brings a unique personality, backstory, and growth arc that deeply resonated with me. From the charming protagonist to the strong-willed supporting cast, the game excels in crafting multidimensional characters whose development forms the emotional backbone of Final Fantasy IX. This game offers a refined and balanced combat system as well. The active time battle system coupled with the introduction of character specific abilities known as trances adds this strategic layer to the battles. The ability to learn new skills through equipment and customizable abilities really grants players the flexibility in shaping their party's strengths. I mean, Final Fantasy IX really is incredible. It's a timeless classic in my opinion, and it captures the essence of the traditional JRPG storytelling with some really cool mechanics. Make it a must play and a standout title in the Final Fantasy series, which is saying a lot because there's so many of these games, but definitely play Final Fantasy IX if you haven't. All right, moving on to Xenogears. It's an ambitious narrative-driven adventure that explores philosophical concepts, psychological depth, and the human condition. The game's sprawling storyline spanning across multiple timelines and dimensions intertwines themes of religion, identity, love, and the complexities of existence altogether. These are all themes many games, even to this day, don't really tap into, and therefore it feels like one of a kind. The depth of its storytelling is complemented by its richly developed characters, each with their own struggles, motives, and inner conflicts that really resonated with me. Xenogears' gameplay blends traditional turn-based combat with intricate mech battles known as Gears. The depth of the combat system character customization through the ether abilities and the strategic elements of gear battles offers a challenging yet rewarding overall experience. The inclusion of platforming segments and puzzle solving diversifies the gameplay and added extra layers of the gameplay mechanics beyond the standard, you know, moment to moment combat, which I really, really enjoyed. This game remains a standout masterpiece that will resonate with fans of narrative driven RPGs. It has a thought provoking narrative, it has super memorable characters, innovative gameplay, not only for its time, but even feels great today and thematic depth. This solidifies its place as a classic in the JRPG genre and inspires a lot of discussions, leaving a lasting impact on those who do decide to play this game. I really, really encourage you to give it a go. And for anyone who's played this, it really shouldn't surprise any of them why this one sits on a list of games that are a 10 out of 10. Next up, we've got Persona 4 Golden. This may be the best game in the series. I know Persona 5 is what really got everyone in on the series, but Persona 4 really is a special experience. Set in a rural town in Japan, the game follows a group of high school students as they investigate a series of mysterious murders occurring within the town. The narrative unfolds with a perfect balance of mystery, suspense, and heartfelt moments, gradually unveiling the dark secrets lurking beneath the seemingly serene surface. The story not only delves into the supernatural, but also delves deep into the themes of self-discovery, friendship, and acceptance. And Persona 4 excels in blending dungeon crawling elements with social simulation mechanics. The engaging turn-based combat, powered by summoning of personas, offer a strategic depth and customization that really stands on its own. The balance here and the introduction of time management in the real world are really unique and you build relationships to strengthen bonds with your party members in the way it kind of mends those two and both of those mechanics kind of feed off of each other is really what the Persona series is known for. It may take a little bit to ramp up, but the story really gets its hooks in you from the beginning. And then once things pick up, you'll really see how it contributes to the immersive world building and character development. It enhances the overall storytelling experience in ways most games just don't. This game stands as a pinnacle of storytelling and gameplay innovation in the JRPG genre, and therefore it sits so high on this list because it's a game that's considered one of the best all time with good reason. Finally, we have Chrono Trigger. At its heart, Chrono Trigger is a tale transcending time and space. 
Honestly, the narrative took me on a breathtaking journey through different eras, seamlessly blends elements of science fiction and fantasy really, really well. The game's time traveling plot, in my opinion, isn't just a gimmick, it's the absolute cornerstone of its brilliance. It enables a captivating exploration of cause and effect fate and the impact of choices made throughout the story. Gameplay wise, Chrono Trigger was absolutely revolutionary for its time and remains exceptional today. Its active time battle system introduced innovations like combined attacks and seamless transitions between exploration and combat, the absence of random encounters, the strategic depth of the combat, and the variety of the endings based on your decisions while you were playing were absolutely groundbreaking for the time. And honestly, it set a standard that so many developers still use in their games today. Chrono Trigger is not just a game. It's an enduring legend in the genre. It's masterful storytelling, unforgettable characters, innovative gameplay, and honestly, super timeless aesthetics, making an experience that you absolutely can't miss. It can appeal to hardcore veterans in the genre, or it could appeal to newcomers. It holds up super well, and there's a ton of ways to play this masterpiece. And if somehow you haven't played it yet, you absolutely must play it. And that's it for my list, everyone. There's 10 JRPGs that are 10 out of 10. These are all must play games. If you're a fan of the genre and there's some games on this list you haven't played yet, then you are in for an amazing time. There are a lot more JRPGs that could get a spot on this list and therefore look out for more amazing lists in the future. I know how great they are for everyone looking for something great to play. Anyway, that's it for me today. If you like this video and wanna see more content like this, please hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comments below what your favorite games are. I'll see you all in the next one, and until next time, I'm out.